same GDP as Michigan, uh, as the state of Michigan. So if we were looking at um, at economic impacts, you know, what we can ask ourselves how much would uh, we be asking ourselves how much would we be conserved? How much would we be uh, would the world be uh, in uproar if uh, the economy of Michigan were to implode? And I actually know the answer to that because it has. And no <laughs> um, but Greece is setting people in place, not because Greece itself is so important, but because of its implications, actual or perceived. Um, perceptions are a big thing here. Um, and one of the things that's happened is that as Greece has gotten into trouble, a number of people have sort of jumped on the Greek crisis, uh, in, you know, like fumble footsteps. They, they want to appropriate it. Uh, this crisis for whatever it is they believe ought to be happening for. Uh, so a lot of it's, it's been uh, catnip for the deficit hawks to say this is what happens if you uh, if you don't slash spending uh, cure deficits right now. Um, um, more, even more specifically, people who combine deficit hawkery with uh, um, opposition to a large welfare state. Really made Greece a big, a big issue, so they, they, they try to grab hold of that. Um, I don't buy either of those. I think mean, to understand the Greek thing, the Greek problem, and it's it's still over. You have to think of it as being uh, something that's much more specific. It has to do with the special constraints that Greece operates under, being a member of the eurozone and being a member of the eurozone at this point, uh, which means that in turn that we're talking about. Uh, basically a European problem. But that's not trivial because the problems of Greece are not unique to Greece. They're especially bad there, but they are in fact getting at the structural problems of Europe as it has been constructed, the fundamental flaws of that construction. And while Greece is per se not a Europe is. And so that's really why this, this all matters.